everyone. I'm going to answer some of the questions like I promised. So many came in. It would take about oh, 75 years to answer them all. But, well, who knows? If I keep taking my vitamins, I might just finish that. So let me just whip through these. Have we seen the last of Rocky? Well, I believe in the film Creed, that's possible, yes, but I never say no to Rocky because I have a couple of ideas, but I'm not so sure because they don't really involve the ring as much as they should, and I'm not so confident that'll be exciting enough for the audience, but who knows? Uh, are you writing a book? Actually, I'm starting one pretty soon, pretty much about the journey uh, of getting here and trying to stay here and not staying here and then coming back. It'll be interesting. Why the tattoo? Well, a long time ago, I was uh, training with Franco Colombo, who was Mr. Universe, for Rocky II, and we got into this bench pressing contest. Not my idea, his. And um, I tore my entire pec off. It was very, very severe. So they sewed it back together big 60 inch scar, I mean 60 stitch scar, but they did it in a twisted way. So it didn't show until maybe 10 years later that all these veins started coming out. And then they got as big around as my pinky finger. So they're pretty rough looking. And I went out and just decided, no, I don't want to see. Actually, you can see it a lot in the last uh, Rocky Balboa. That was pretty bad. So I decided just to have it covered and kind of camouflage it. Then one thing led to another, then another, then another. But the origins were covering up an injury. Um, who's the favorite actor to do a fight with? Well, I love doing it with Dolph. The most intriguing one was, well, Hulk Hogan, because you need a guy that's 305 pounds and could move like that. It was amazing. But I really loved with those two guys. Um, and Claude Van Damme was great. But the rugged fight I had was with uh, in John Hertzfeld, directed this film, a friend of mine for about 50 years, called Escape Parent 3, where they had all this choreography and blocking, blocking, blocking. And I don't believe in fights there's much blocking. I think that's more stage kung fu. A real fight is just a brutal assault and there's a frenetic quality to it that you say, this is savage, this this is survival. So I said to the fellas, please, let's not do this anymore. Let's just, I wanna go in there with this actor, Devin, and let it go for about 90 seconds. Let me just let it go because most fights don't last more than 25 seconds before one person is in dire straits. So that was very, 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 very rough and dangerous because we were going, had it, and I wanted him to come at me. I can't believe we pulled it off without more injuries, but that that was it, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting too lazy to learn choreography. Um, let's see. Hardest Rambo scenes. Hardest Rambo scenes were uh, falling through the tree in the first one. You had three different stuntmen. I was the bottom third, and I, I did it successfully the first time. The trick was to land and catch the branch in that fleshy part between the ribs and the hips. Did it. The director goes, ah, the, the, the thing you don't want to hear. One more time for safety. Went through, caught the branch dead center in my ribs, broke them, and hitting the ground. So when you see me going, on the ground. That's real. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, Rambo 3. That was unbelievable. That was uh, pulling up. We hired a guy to do the horse stunt. We were playing with the dead sheep. It, it, that was very dangerous because it's on rocky ground and everything else. In one fall, you could be paralyzed. Anyway, for some reason, he, he couldn't do it. This guy could ride upside down, do spinning tricks every, on, on his head. So I ended up doing it, and that was um, that was a nail biter. That was it. And also running in front of a tank and laying down and letting it roll over you, and then grabbing the bottom. There's something about a tank pressed against your nose that gets your attention. Um, 
inspiration for the line, nobody hits his hard as life. I was talking to my son about what's the, what the future is all about. And for some reason that came up, no one punches harder than life. And I thought, wow, that is true. That is true. It's life is undefeated. Can't beat it. You just have to go on the defensive. But that's where that came from. Uh, private conversation. And uh, let's see. I'm going to catch the funniest moments, definitely in the shower. We were making kind of derogatory comments about our manhood. Can we get another demo, man? I think there is coming. There, we're working on right now with uh, Warner Brothers. Man, it's looking fantastic. So that should come out. That's going to happen. Um, how do you manage in a house with four women and two female dogs? I don't. I roll over and play dead. No problem. Uh, let's see. Mm, how do you eat so little? In, in Rocky Three. All right. Well, in Rocky Three, I decided I wanted to do a drastic change. His ego has changed. His self-image has changed. So I went on a very, very stringent diet primarily tuna fish. After a while, I didn't even know where I lived. Uh, seriously, my, my phone number was like, what is it again? Because you need carbohydrates for the brain to function. And it wasn't functioning. But to act, to write, to direct, and fight, and do all that stuff was accomplished by about 35 cups of coffee and these little brown kind of oatmeal brown rice cookies about that big that I pop in my mouth maybe every 15 minutes to keep my glycogen going because it got down to 2.6 body fat which is insane really that's don't do that uh, let's see what music do you like to well when I write sometimes I, I get fixated on a certain voices it soothes me I don't even hear the music but it keeps me company so any music that keeps me company so right now I'm fixated on Michael McDonald who I think is the greatest singer ever he just epitomizes the word soul and technique um, any role that you ever gave up <laughs> every actor has and we all have regrets the roles I gave up were witness coming home which John Voight won the Oscar for, uh, Die Hard. I was asked to do it, but I didn't follow through. A couple of Quentin Tarantino films, not because I didn't want to be in it, because I was not available, which is usually the case when we blow it. Um, what is my favorite activity in quarantine? Getting to know my family better. It's, you know, usually you're gone 75% of the time. Now you're there and you actually look in their eyes. He said, this is fantastic. We're, I'm being provided this opportunity, which won't be around much longer. You know, they'll move out of the nest. So I am just cherishing these moments. Uh, how is your insight on how do you write a script? How many drafts? Well, that would take about an hour to answer. The thing is, it's what kind of movie I want to see that I think the audience, something we share in, some, some dilemma that I think we can identify with. I don't try to write something that's so personal that it's primarily written for an audience of one. Uh, and how many drafts? I've done as many as 140 rewrites on one movie. In other words, there's an old saying, you don't write, writers don't write, they rewrite. Well, that's what I did, I rewrote. My nose is tickling, what do you think that is? up there well I'll have it for dinner let's see um, if you could go back in time and no maybe I'll answer that last uh, tell me a secret okay tell me a secret that you can talk about that you shouldn't talk about today okay that well we're making the movie Hunter that's gonna happen That's been in the works for like 20 years. Um, okay. 
What about, tell me about the painting process. Well, I won't belabor this because again, it's very, very personal uh, what floats your boat. So the, the painting process is I go in there realizing the first five paintings are horrible. They're gonna be horrible. I accept that. Same thing with writing. It's like starting up an old engine that's been left in a barnyard for about 20 years, covered in dust and chicken feathers and crap and everything. And it's boom, spinning, boom, stuttering. You're firing on one cylinder. Then the juice is low. Something happens. It just gives it up. If it's supposed to give it up. In other words, if you hit that inspired moment, bang. But realize the first are going to be, the first few, unless it's a miracle, are going to be duds. They're not going to be. It just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't come up. You know, I think I, I got the bug today. Oh, yeah, I think I'll paint the Mona Lisa with one shot. No. 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 There might have been 20 failures before he got it the way he liked it. Um, at my age, what keep, or what your age, what keeps you motivated in shape? Ego. There, I said it. It's ego. And that's the fuel. Um, I'm very competitive with other people, but even more with myself. And that's a drag because I can rationalize not doing it in competition with other people, but you can't rationalize it yourself. You just feel like, come on, you know, push back. Yeah. Don't let nature have its way so soon, you know. Try to go in uncharted waters. So that's where I go. Um, a lot of fuel is anger from childhood, which I know I'd say 98% of us have that. That is the fuel for creativity. I think if you had every artist has something going on inside that they have to purge, not a one time thing, you know, not like, oh yeah, I want to doodle on a horse, but they're constantly evoking different thoughts and insights and feelings and rage, mood. I think if, if um, all the actors and painters and sculptors were normal, there would be no art. Everyone say, why, why am I putting my soul out there to be criticized? So there is an angst that makes for greatness. So keep on angsting. Um, let's see. Is it really true that you were writing Rocky and then you had to sell your dog? That, that unfortunately is very true. For $40 at a 7-Eleven, um, couldn't afford dog food. Either that or I was gonna eat it myself. It was, it was, it was, it was bad times. So, um, I, I'll be there, I'm finishing something. I'll be right there. Uh, 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 no, no. <laughs> anyway, life. Anyway, um, would you like to collaborate with Al Pacino? My God, please. That's the ultimate privilege. I think he's the greatest actor maybe ever. Just great, great. Do you see Paradise Alley as an underrated movie? Definitely. Definitely. I, I love that film. I love the colors. I love the actors. I love the whole feel. I love the dialogue. It's just sometimes it happens. Same thing happened at Night Off. Love that film. By the way, we're remaking that as a streaming series. Also at Universal. Really proud at all these things that are coming back around because they're, you know, they're holding up. Anyway, if I could go back in time and talk to myself, give myself what advice, I'd say, ah, uh, you gotta start looking forward, way forward. Even when you have no money, look forward. See the house, see the car, see the see all the things that you can accomplish now. And eventually, if you're lucky, you accomplish them. But plan ahead and keep going. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell to get notification when we drop our next video.